They say that talking to yourself is a sign of insanity. But I think that's only if you answer back, right? Right. This is Talking to Myself, an art advice podcast where I use anecdotes from my own life to try to make myself a better artist, and hopefully a better person. Others might be able to get some benefit from this as well, but mostly I'm just trying to avoid therapy. Today on the podcast, I thought we'd talk about the rules and breaking the rules, bending the rules, trying to live within the rules. Most of these podcast episodes are character flaws of my own, and I'm I'm sharing them with the world because I'm trying to get rid of them and trying to make myself better. Not to, and I'm I'm trying to relate it back to art so that I can make some practical benefit of it as well. But getting rid of ticks and character flaws and things in real life is actually beneficial in lots of ways. So today's discussion is about a personality trait I have that I'm trying to get rid of myself. And I'll explain with an anecdote. In my neighborhood, there's a, a guy. I don't know how old he is. Probably early teens, mid-teens maybe, I don't know. And he rides this dirt bike around all the time. On the sidewalk, in the yard, and he does wheelies and stuff because he's an idiot. He's a teenager, and that's what they do. And I find this incredibly annoying. Not only because I can hear it. He lives like a street away, but I can hear it all the time because it's a dirt bike. And he insists on revving it all the time. And there are practical arguments against against this. Obviously, he's breaking the law. He doesn't wear a helmet. Half the time, he doesn't wear shoes. And some horrible part of myself is hoping that he'll have an accident and not be able to ride the stupid motorbike anymore. Not that I really want him to get hurt, but it'd be awfully nice if he couldn't do this stupid crap anymore for some practical reason that he couldn't avoid. Certainly, fearing the law is not going to stop him. But the part that comes back to my character flaw is... I'm angry because he's getting away with breaking the rules that everyone else has to obey. For instance, you don't ride a dirt bike on the sidewalk. You don't do a wheelie and whip around someone when they're trying to turn their car, which has happened to me with this guy. Just being stupid and reckless, there are legitimate reasons not to do that. <laughs> and this, this kid doesn't seem to understand those. So that bothers me. But it also bothers me about the law thing, because I feel like if in a society, if we have laws that, that are practical and make sense, I keep using the word practical, laws that have valid reasons behind them, like no dirt bikes on the sidewalk, then we should all obey them because they're practical and because they have legitimate reasons behind them. Because it's not safe <laughs> for anybody. And when someone flaunts that, it, it irritates me that they could, he just does it, gets away with it all the time. Not that I want to do it myself, but it feels like no one should be doing that. Maybe it's jealousy, I guess. You jealousy at the freedom that this person has. It's part of a larger problem I have with myself, where when someone's being kind of a jerk in public, like being loud or vandalizing stuff or things, you're like... They're disturbing the peace, essentially, in my opinion, which is obviously uptight and very suburban. They're disturbing the peace that we all try to keep in order to live together as a society, but part of me admires that they're able to do this and get away with it. I don't have the guts to pull this kind of thing off. I don't even like, you know, hanging out in public with people that can come by and just talk to you for no reason. That makes me un uncomfortable. These guys are yelling at people they don't know. <laughs> Which admittedly is a bit of an extreme version of what I'm talking about. The point here is, I'm trying to let myself, um, force myself to not be so engaged with that the negative feeling that that gives me. The, I don't know if it's envy or anger or irritation, mostly it's irritation, that that generates in me. I'm trying to push that away. Not let that be such a big deal to me. As long as I can avoid the danger that it poses, physically... <laughs> then, you know, what am I going to do about it? So I have to learn to accept that other people doing stupid things might be irritating, but I can't do anything about it, so I need to just not let it bother me so much. How does this relate to art? Well, 
there are what you would some people would consider procedures rules that you must follow to get your art in a public space and to get it into the world of art sales kind of thing i'm talking more about gallery stuff of course there are all kinds of procedures and things if you've ever done an art show for a small gallery or a large gallery then you will probably be familiar with the fact that they want an artist statement and it has to be a certain format and it has to hit these points you feel like you're writing an essay you know which in, feels redundant to me because I feel like if I'm trying to get a message across, that's what the art is for. If the art doesn't communicate what I'm trying to communicate, then it, I didn't. I failed doing the art. And no amount of me backpedaling and using ridiculous words like zeitgeist in the description is going to fix that. But the studios require it. And my irritation with this structure is something that I have to get used to if I'm planning to exhibit in galleries. You have to have format restrictions. You have to have display restrictions. I mean, the gallery is trying to, to do things to a consistent standard so that they, people can judge the art based on the aesthetics alone. And I understand that. It's still irritating. <laughs> so today's moment to my future self. Understand that you're going to have to do things beyond creating the art in order to play the game of getting the art out there for sale and getting it to people who want to have it or want to buy it. Maybe you don't have to do all of it. Maybe you can find some creative way to do it your own way. But you still have to do a lot of these things because some of these rules are actually based on practicality. For instance, it's better if the art has a title, something that can help tell the story of the piece to the person buying it. Sure, there might be some famous museum artists you get away with calling everything untitled number whatever, and that's fine. Once you have a name, it's not going to sell based on the title of the artwork. But think of it like a book. If someone hears the title of a book, they may or may not want to be interested in reading it based on the title. If someone sees a painting and the title is memorable, they will remember it because that's what memorable means. So, in this world of 24-hour news cycles and instant gratification, you need to have some kind of hook. So titles are good. One of the few pieces I ever sold in a gallery show, in fact, was sold basically because of the title. It was a small drawing of a hippo with a bunch of psychedelic patterns behind it, and I named it Mabel the Psychic Hippo. And the person that bought it told me that the reason they bought it is because they thought the name was really funny. So this kind of stuff can be important. And that's just one example. A lot of the rules are for practical reasons. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So future self, don't be so uptight about other people breaking the rules. Forget about them. Focus on what you need to do to get the results you want. And uh, if that involves bending the rules, then bend them. If that involves swallowing your, swallowing your irritation and dealing with the rules, putting forth what the rules require, do that. It'll be worth it in the end. Somehow. <laughs> Trust me, future self, I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out. And listening to me babble yet again. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Who get to see and hear these a week earlier than everyone else. And are the shiniest people I know. You guys are the reason I'm doing this. And I greatly appreciate you. So until next time. Take care. Make art your way. But go by the rules if you have to show it to someone. <laughs> and don't drive your dirt bike on the sidewalk. It just seems like common sense. Bye for now. <laughs>